Former White House Press Secretary for President Biden, Jen Psaki, is joining. She's got a new role um, on TV that we'll talk about in a second. You'll see that tonight for the State of the Union. But it's so nice to meet you. So nice to meet you, too. We're just like, uh, we've watched you on television for so long. We feel like we. I, I we mean, know I've how watched you, handle you pressure. on television for so long. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe longer than you've watched me. I think it's uh, fair to say maybe. a bit longer. But I have to tell. I just I'm I'm so impressed with um, the, the role that you uh, executed so well um, on Thank on a you. daily basis that we got to see unfold. And just as a as a person that stands in front of people to do something that's completely mindless to see what you did under the pressure you did it. I just don't know how a human being does it. I'm so curious to know a little bit about what life is like when you are the press secretary at the White House. Do you, what, like it's at, in the evening after your, your, I don't know, your kids are in bed and you've had something to eat, now what? Well, after my kids are in bed and I've had something to eat, I either watch a str- show on television that I just need to stream um, because I need something mindless that has nothing to do with politics. Right. Uh, right now I'm super into um yellowstone i'm a little a few years behind on that but (laughs) that's okay my husband and i watched the first few episodes and i said wow this is a great show i wonder if people know about this and it's like it's won a million awards um so we're, (laughs) we're watching that uh, I'm also a huge reader. I just do something that's a little mindless. But, but as when, a mom when, of a yeah, when you're at, when you're active as a press secretary, are the you have to check like we check our phones because we just feel like we have to check our phones to see what we're talking about. How often do you check your phone? All the time. I mean, it's an addiction. You almost can't get away from it. I uh, every day that I was in the job as press secretary, I'd wake up in the morning, my eyes would open sometime in the fives, I would say sometimes five, sometimes 545. If I hit the snooze a few times. And the first thing I would do is look at my phone and see what happened overnight, what happened in the world, because in that job, you're speaking for what's happening in the country, but also uh, you know, what's happening anywhere in the world. I mean, the earthquake that just right. happened yeah. this right. week, you'd be speaking to that and what the U.S. is doing. So you need to know. So that was the first thing I did even before coffee. And I'm a coffee addict. Well, how about the balloon? I was thinking like, wow, that would have been yeah. an interesting day to be talking about the balloon in there. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. For sure. I mean, so that uh, the balloon, which <laughs> feels like it's I, I, the Chinese balloon, which we all know. It, it feels like it's the makings of an episode of a show, and I don't know Jack. I've also been watching Jack Ryan, so it, it feels could like be an something episode that could of that. happen. Right. It could right. be an episode of Jack Ryan or a season where Jack Ryan somehow is in the air, hanging on the balloon. <laughs> something wild would happen. Um, but yes, exactly, and that's a scenario: the, the Chinese balloon, where one. Uh, They didn't know everything that was happening uh, in the White House at the time. There were meetings, I'm certain, in the Situation Room where the national security people meet talking about what could it be, what should they do. Uh, But sometimes there aren't always things you can say publicly. So when you're speaking on behalf, you're you're basically trying to provide updates, but it doesn't always mean you can say everything you know, and it doesn't always mean you know everything, because sometimes these things are developing, as we saw with the Chinese balloon. But that's such a discipline you have to have and like a, a, a governing capability, meaning yeah. like the way that you can filter and know things but not say things and choose vocabulary. I'm just fascinated by all of the detail of it, Jen, honestly. Yeah, I will say I um, my binder I have or I had, I kept it actually, uh, oh. had an embarrassing number of tabs and I was a, a Staples <laughs> aficionado. I mean, that is a store where I had every highlighter and every label so I could remember uh, where things were in that binder. But ultimately, every day, um, I tried to just learn as much as I could from the people who are working in government. And I'm a believer, uh, whatever party you're from, people who are working in government are trying to do better for people Mm. in the country. And there are, it's amazing the kind of expertise you will find. I mean, you you talked about the Chinese balloon. There are people in government who are experts on cyber technology from China who Mm -hmm. you can call in moments like that and say, what should we know? What can I tell people? And I always saw that as my job. You are the Mm. deliverer of all of the amazing work of these good citizens, some who have worked in government through many, many administrations. And, you know, they're all trying to just make things better for people overall. Jen Psaki with us, a former uh, press secretary at the White House. And uh, again, we we commend you on it. Is, it just seems like such a high pressure job. So 
Thank you for all the information you gave us over the, the time you were there. Now, um, you're part of tonight's special State of the Union coverage on MSNBC. Mm-hmm. So what's your role? This seems like a, a little less pressure, this role. Just different pressure, right? Okay. <laughs> but yes, less pressure. It's very different because I was a part of writing and working on these State of the Unions for so many years. And for the first time, I will be reading it and hearing it along with everybody else. So um, there are benefits to that in that when you're working on these speeches, you can get so in the weeds of the changing of paragraphs and the changing of drafts because they go through dozens of drafts through the writing of a speech like the State of the Union. Uh, but I also won't know what it what's in there. Uh, and so I will be listening. I'll be hearing along with millions of Americans who will be watching. So when... It's probably no certain answer to this, but when do you think the State of the Union, or when did you see it complete? Is it is it redrafted up until the last few minutes or hours, or when when is there a deadline for the State of the Union? Till the last moment, till the moment Joe Biden speaks the words out of his mouth. Is that right? The, uh, it is not final. No and way. No, completely true. And I, uh, because I've worked on a lot of these. Presidents are always uh, tinkering with them and changing words or adding. I remember one year, uh, President uh, Barack Obama added a paragraph, a, a quote from Martin Luther King that ended up being a key part of the speech, basically on his way to deliver the speech in the car. Um, wow. There are uh, so there's always a changing and a tweaking up until the very moment when the president walks down into the House chamber to deliver the speech. It's so fascinating. I feel like I could talk to you for days mm-hmm. about all of this. You too. I have lots of <laughs> questions, Ryan, for you, too, about everything you work on. It's a lot of pressure. I'm changing things up until the last minute, so that last <laughs> vote is counted. The dramatic pause before he reads <laughs> results. <laughs> That's right. Um, well, yeah. we can't wait to see you in this role. You can watch Jen as part of tonight's special State of the Union coverage, MSNBC, 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern. And let's have you back because um, we'll talk more. I'd love to come back. Thanks so much. And congratulations uh, again. It's a pleasure Thank to get to know so you. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Too.